Food and Agricultural Exceptionalism One way to look at food or agricultural exceptionalism is how the law has often given a pass to the food industry. This creates exemptions for this industry in certain areas. A better definition is that agricultural exceptionalism is a belief system that fuels a range of exemptions or laws protecting agriculture from the purview of the public, including in the areas of environmental law, animal law, and property law, but also in trade law, employment law, and many other areas. In this documentary, we will cover where exemptions existed in the food industry historically, where laws were strengthened, and where such laws may still continue to protect farms today. We may then be able to answer the question of whether we are moving away from exceptionalism or not. Agricultural exceptionalism began in the 1930s during the Great Depression, where farmers couldn't afford to produce crops and food rotted as a result. In the Great Depression, farmers were producing plenty of food, but no one could afford to buy it. So farmers started going out of business. This caused market distortion and heavy influence on what farmers should grow with little consideration for consumer demand. In 1961, President JFK wrote RTF Amendments, which stands for Right to Farm. These amendments were the newest trend in an evolution of laws aimed at protecting farming and ranching across the United States, largely in response to unprecedented efforts across the country to restrict and regulate agriculture. Later, they became RTF statutes in 1978 and evolved in 1980 into laws. These laws protect farming operations and prevent nuisance lawsuits from stopping such operations. However, due to such exceptionalism, the animal industry has become one of the largest factors in environmental degradation. It consumes 70% of the uh, global fresh water, drains on 38% of the global land in use, and causes 14% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, generating more methane, nitrous oxide, and carbon dioxide than the global transport sector. A key driver responsible for the ongoing proliferation of CAFO, or concentrated animal feeding operations, issues are farmers' rights, which denote laws and regulations set up with the purpose of protecting farmers and their businesses by either shielding them from lawsuits or exempting them from the law altogether. There are other such exemptions carved out for the farming industry in the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act. Such acts are great examples of the law stepping back from the food industry and not really being so hands-on. The Clean Water Act treats agricultural storm water runoff differently from other types of storm water runoff. The Clean Water Act makes it illegal to pollute or destroy covered water without a permit. Many agricultural activities have long been exempted from permitting requirements, thus polluting the waters with fertilizers, pesticides, animal wastes, and more. This is due to food being such a necessity for survival, as well as an integral part of the U.S. economy. Such laws would restrict and could harm the important food distribution process as well. Similarly, the Clean Air Act establishes a comprehensive set of regulations and permits for air emissions. And again, much like the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act exempts many of these requirements from farms as a necessity for food and its distribution being the driving reasons. The Animal Welfare Act, or AWA, of 1966, as well as the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act, or HMSA, enforced in 1978, were both enacted to ensure the protection and welfare of animals. The AWA regulates the treatment of all animals, and the HMSA requires the proper treatment and humane handling of all food animals slaughtered. However, both laws still some have some exemptions in the agricultural industry. For example, the AWA does not apply to farmed animals, and the HMSA does not apply to chickens or other birds. Many of these laws and acts fall under organizations like the FDA and the USDA, who of course play a very important part in general in ensuring food and agricultural practices are safe, healthy, and humane. The Food Safety Inspection Service, or FSIS, which was established in 1978 and is part of the USDA, plays a vital role in, expe in expecting 
uh, whether all meat, poultry, eggs, and egg products are safe to eat. The law has been strengthened through the Food Safety Moder Modernization Act, or FSMA, of 2011. This was a near 70-plus year overhaul of improvements to the food and agricultural industry. This act enables the FDA to better protect public health by strengthening the food safety system. According to the website, it enables them to focus more on preventing food safety problems rather than relying primarily on reacting to problems after they occur. The law also provides the FDA with new enforcement authorities designed to achieve higher rates of compliance with prevention and risk-based food safety standards and to better respond to and contain problems when they do occur. The law also gives the FDA important new tools to hold imported foods to the same standards as domestic foods and directs the FDA to build an integrated national food safety system in partnership with state and local authorities. While that law was proposed to tighten the rules with respect to food safety, there are still exemptions related to certain produce and certain farms with their operations. The FSMA is the perfect example of food exceptionalism still existing and continuing today. Such exclusions and exemptions are based on the total annual sales of food you grow, where you sell your food and who to, and the type of food or produce you grow. Many of the produce that are exempt fall under a rarely consumed raw category, like coffee beans, cranberries, corn, eggplant, pecans, potatoes, and so on. There are about 38 different types of rarely consumed raw foods that fall under this category. Compared to where the food and agricultural industry was, we have come a very long way moving away from the many special treatments it once received. Clearly food or agricultural exceptionalism still exists today and the law still does continue to protect and treat these industries differently.